Hi guys, so welcome back. If you recently subscribed to this channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for watching. And if you are watching a video from my channel for the very first time, I want to welcome you as well. I hope you stick around. I do a lot of videos on luxury product reviews, as well as Natasha Denona and Pat McGrath eyeshadow tutorials. Uh, Vizier is another brand that I really enjoy. So if that's content that is interesting to you, like this video, subscribe, and ring the bell to get notified every time new content is released. Today I have another Did It Work video. It's been some time um, since I talked about, or since I got to talk about products I got like a month ago or two months ago, and then be able to give you an update. Um, I'm hoping to be pretty thorough today with that so that you guys can think about, maybe think about getting these products for fall or the holiday. Anyways, whatever the case may be, I hope the information is helpful to you. The look that I have on is actually two different looks. <laughs> if you're interested in that video, I'm going to link it above. And then throughout this video, as I talk about the different products, I will also throw up a link um, if there's a dedicated video so that if you're interested, you can hop on over to have a look. Without further ado, let's get to the products. So the first item I'm going to talk about is Surratt Prismatique Eyeshadow. This is the sort of a one and done. It's more like two and done. There are two products. The other product, you swivel this and it reveals like a powder product. This is the cream, which I think of it as a base. You apply that first and then you overlay the powder on top. It's beautiful. It's a complete look and um, it does not budge. This cream base here does not budge. It's not very emollient. It's still easy to apply, but you can't quite move it around as much um, as the other eyeshadow product that I'll talk about in a moment here. So um, I can confirm that it doesn't move. If you have it, it's gonna stay on you all day. If you use uh, eye primer, which is even better, it really is just gonna stay on all day long. So if you like two and done, one and done eyeshadows, uh, I do very much enjoy Surratt's Prismatique eyeshadow. The second product is also Surratt. Uh, this is actually the lid lacquer. So I have this in Hadaka, which is like a beige nude color, and Kogensha, which is like a, like a brown, but you know, it has a shimmer to it. I don't know if you guys can see that well on camera. This is what it looks like on my finger. And so it's got this really, on my lid, it's just, just a hint of color. There's kind of a gold glisten from it. It's really beautiful, lifts your eye. I recently did a 10 minute full face makeup video challenge where I used this, only this, on my lids, if you don't include the primer. And it was like very put together. You know, it didn't even matter that there wasn't a bunch of other textures or dimension. It was just a nice, fresh look, and yeah, it went well with everything. So I love the lid lacquer. Uh, in terms of did it work, uh, I would say you need to watch out for creasing. It will crease. That, that's just the that's just the story. Uh, if you have dry eyelids, I think you might fare better. But for people who have oily eyelids, this is not going to be for you. And for people who are in between, maybe, I feel like I'm in between because my eyelids aren't necessarily dry, but I do need to put eye cream on every night or else it will become dry. So I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle. I think most of us are somewhere in the middle. Uh, if you are, there will be creasing, but you can easily fix it maybe every three hours or so just by kind of gently patting it on. You don't even need to layer on any more product. You just literally blend it out with a finger and then you're good to go. So for how low maintenance and easy it is and the look you get from it, which is very beautiful and very natural, there's just something there. It's not very obvious, but when you keep looking, you're like, oh, wow, like what is that? Uh, that's the lid lacquer. So I, I still really like this product even though it creases and I plan to continue to use it and I'll just do, you know, that fix uh, every couple of hours, which is no trouble at all. You don't even need to go into the bathroom and do that. It's just like, you know, a compact mirror 
and then you're you're good. The third product is also an eyeshadow product. Uh, this is Dior's. This is their Quint, and I got the one in denim. It's so beautiful. Denim just caught my eye amongst like the dozen colors they released in the fall. And the first time I played with this, did a review, um, I tried to use all of the colors, which was a mistake. I think the look was okay, but you know, it wasn't as easy as I expected it to be because I used all five shades. Um, the instructions that come with the package says, if you want a more intense look, these are the three shades you stick with. If you want something lighter, these are the three shades you should be using. And I know that's a suggestion, but having used it and then going back to those instructions, I feel like they really just meant for you to use a couple of shades to create looks, um, which I am fine with. And I tried that out and I thought the look was beautiful. Um, I posted that on Instagram and I talked about how I used uh, these two shades here and then this one here kind of like as a transition and then I topped it light-handedly with this shade just to put it into the crease and I thought that was beautiful. The formula is beautiful. Very little fallout, very good payoff and easy to blend. So I look forward to their holiday releases because those two color stories are gorgeous. So I, I really can't wait. I think this is a, a good palette. Okay, so I guess we're on a roll here with eye products because the next two things I'm gonna talk about are also eye products, especially for your lashes. Um, the Giorgio Armani Eyes to Kill Mascara, I really enjoy. Um, and the number one thing I enjoy most about it is the comb or the brush. It separates out my lashes very, very well. And it is a formula on the drier side. So while you can keep layering in product, there's only so much you can do. It's almost like you can't clump your lashes because the brush combs out your lashes or separates them. And <laughs> within like a minute after applying, it dries. So if you've been going at it for a minute or so, it's gonna get harder and harder to apply any more layers of product. And because of that, I think this is great if you have long lashes, but maybe not a ton of volume, and you just want all of them to be you know, separated very nicely. I think this is a good mascara that you might wanna try. And if you're looking more for lengthening formulas, uh, this probably won't cut it for you. It does lengthen because, you know, the product does build on top of itself and it does lengthen your lashes, but it's not like those fiber mascaras where it just keeps lengthening as you apply with each coat. And the other item that I have here is Lancome's Monsieur Big Mascara. Like most Lancome mascaras, I there isn't really one or two things that I would remember that would stick with me um, after using it. So this as a volumizing mascara is, it works. From the times that I've used it, I think it adds a good amount of volume. I think the lengthening is also okay. In fact, I would say in terms of volume and lengthening, it probably does a little bit better than the Eyes to Kill. But the Eyes to Kill is great at separating lashes. And sometimes, uh, now that I've curled my lashes too, I find that formulas that are too wet will tend to clump them. So I've actually found this to be really fantastic in combing out these curl lashes as product is being applied on. Anyway, um, if I had to choose between one of the two, I'd definitely choose Eyes to Kill. But if you're looking to add volume, uh, you might want to consider Miss You Big. Moving away from eye products, we have some face products to talk about. This is the Chantecaille Blur Powder, and I believe this is discontinued because the last time I went on their website, it was not there anymore. And I feel like if it was out of stock, they would still have the product, but it would just say out of stock, returning suit, you know, something, something along those lines, but it was just off the website. So they might not have this anymore. Um, the blur powder is beautiful. It's a matte finish. So, you know, you're not gonna get any kind of glow or sheen from it, but it really does kind of blur everything. And unlike the hourglass ambient powders that give you like a sheen or a lighting to it, this blurring 
makes your skin look like your skin. It's very skin-like, but just like a touch perfected. So it's subtle and it's a little bit hard to describe because there's not one aspect of it that's really obvious. But when I look back at photos and think about how my makeup overall were for the day, I always felt that when I had this blurring powder on, everything was just a little bit more perfected, a little bit more smoothed out. So uh, I think this worked well and I'm going to check whether it's truly discontinued. So you might see some notes at the bottom here um, after I film this, like, you know, I'm telling you that it worked and then if it's discontinued, I feel like that's not, you know, I don't want to do that to you guys. But Chantecaille powders, uh, both are talc free loose powder that I like to use to set my makeup. I really enjoy that too. It just complements your skin. All their products just complement your skin and brings out the best part. Next I have the By Terry Hydro Powder. Uh, this has hyaluronic in it and this powder is, it's so bright you can't see it, but it's a white powder basically and it's very fine. Um, I have used it and I felt like it does do a good job of setting your makeup, mattifying everything. I would say it might be even a touch better than my Chantecaille Talc Free Loose Powder. Um, but because of this shade being white, you know, supposed to be um, good for many different skin types, skin tones, uh, it could leave a white cast if you're too heavy handed with it. And so I think it's just a matter of preference when it comes to these powders. Uh, I didn't feel like my skin was additionally more moisturized or retained moisture better from this powder, but I also did not feel like my skin dried out from it. So I think it were nicely. I do think um, the ingredients and the property that helps you retain moisture and keep your skin healthy and hydrated after a day of makeup uh, I, I do believe it does have those benefits and maybe you're going to see it more if you use it all the time and I just haven't used it for too long to really say. I just know it wears fairly well. And this next one I am pretty excited about. It's the Clay de Po Radiant Cushion Foundation. This was a gift to me for my birthday and uh, it's lovely. It's absolutely lovely. And I feel like Clay de Po has such good complexion products and I've you know I've heard a lot of good things but having used it now I'm like yes this is why because they nailed it for the cushion um, they have a great concealer everybody loves and the way that I use this cushion is um, really on any day that I feel like I don't I don't want to mess with using um, a foundation brush <laughs> I don't want to put anything on my hand to dab my foundation brush on um, I just go and use this because I put my sponge on it. The next product I have I'm really excited about. I got this as a gift this year for my birthday. This is the Clay de Po Radiant Cushion Foundation. It's beautiful. Uh, coverage is light to medium, buildable to more of a medium coverage. And uh, it's just really easy. On days that I don't feel like using a foundation brush, I don't want to put any foundation on the back of my hand. I just go in with a sponge, dab it in, and then apply. It's quick, it's easy, the finish is always beautiful. It is a, you know, it's radiant cushion, so, you know, it does give kind of a luminous finish, but it's more, it's more on like the soft matte and then radiance. It's not a super kind of luminous foundation, which, I tend to not be a fan of those because I have combination skin and those kind of foundations usually breaks apart on me faster than matte foundations. So of course matte, long stain power, um, and also soft matte foundations. But I think this one is the right combination of being long lasting and also uh, give you that kind of luminous finish. So I really, really enjoy the Clay de Po. Um, I'm even considering during the winter time as my complexion lightens up, uh, not having been in the sun or not being able to be in the sun as much, I might pick up a lighter shade in this. And right now I am, and the one that I have right now that I'm using for the summer is O20. Uh, it's a tad bit too light for me, 
but I think it's it's pretty close. Like if I were to go to the next shade up, it might be too deep. The thing with cushion foundations is they typically don't come with the same range of shades as the liquid or cream or stick foundations. And it's understandable because coverage is supposed to be lighter and if you were to add, you know, if it was too light, you can add some bronzer to warm it up. Uh, if it was too deep, you could probably, you know, if it's not too, too deep, you could probably lighten it up with like mixing some concealer in it even. But anyhow, um, I enjoy this very much. I do recommend it if you're interested in a cushion foundation to try. The last item I have is the Elmez lipsticks. Um, I've gotten two of the fall colors. If you saw my video from last Friday, uh, I reviewed them, did swatches, and I talked about them again this past Wednesday. And this is the color that I have on today. So this is Rose Nui from the fall release. And I just gotta say, these lipsticks are gorgeous. Like the formula, now that I've used it for over a month, formula is gorgeous, color payoff is great. Uh, this matte finish that I have on is fairly comfortable. It's a soft matte and it settles over time. You do need to touch up after a couple of hours, especially after a meal, um, but it, you know, it's it could be a lot more drying for a matte lipstick and that's just not the case from my experience um, So I really really enjoy it and I love the look you get from it. The uh, Sen formula wears very comfortably for many hours uh, I had this on yesterday all day and I did not do any touch-ups But I remember right at the end of the evening after dinner drinks There really wasn't any more lipstick left, but my lips uh, throughout the day did not feel dry at all. So this is just very comfortable if there's um, a color or a shade that you like from the brand and you want to get that luxury brand experience I recommend getting that shade in satin so it's comfortable and it's something you can keep in your purse uh, and, and put it on whenever you want some color on your lips. And that's all I have for this Did It Work video. I hope you found the follow-up and feedback helpful. I know I always wonder when I watch people try on new makeup whether they're going to go back to that product afterwards. And so hopefully with this I'm going to continue with these types of videos that you guys find it generally helpful. I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!